morning to you. It's been a good place to be. Uh, good to see Courtney and her kids here, and just a blessing to hear them saying Jesus loves me. Uh, I look forward to that, just hearing them saying. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to the book of James, chapter 2. James, chapter 2. <clears throat> Can you give me a glass of water? James chapter 2. <clears throat> we'll start reading at verse 14. I want to preach about faith this morning. And um, James chapter 2, starting verse 14, says, <clears throat> What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? A brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warm and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what doth it profit even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone yea a man may say thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith Without thy works, and I will show thee thy, my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Whereas the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. God, have blessing to the reading of this word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you've given us to be in your house. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach this morning. God, I pray that you would have your will and your way in the service here this morning. We thank you for each one that's here. We thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity, Lord, just to be able to serve you. And we pray, God, that you would just take the words that we have to speak this morning, Heavenly Father, as we preach, and that you would have them to reach the ears, you would have uh, hear them, Heavenly Father, and that, Lord, if there be one here that's lost, Lord, they realize their need of salvation, maybe one that's watching on Facebook or something, Lord, would realize their need of salvation, Lord, I pray that you would touch hearts, and you'd have your will and your way, Heavenly Father, and we'll give you the praise, in Jesus' name we ask, and amen. <clears throat> Not really along with my message, but it just kind of spoke to my heart as I was reading there again, uh, you know, thou believest there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. You know, there's a lot of people in the world today that will say, I believe in God. But you know what, believe, just believing in God does not save you. Uh, believing in God, you know, there's a lot of people that will say, well, I believe in God. But the Bible says here, the devils believe and tremble. You do well to believe in God, the, the devils believe and tremble. There's a difference in just believing God and believing in God and, and asking him to save you. You know, have you trusted him for salvation? Have you put your faith in him for salvation? That's the difference. Uh, you know, trust him and ask him to come into your heart and to save you. But I want to use verse 26 there. It says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Uh, God's word is, is the foundation of our faith and, and only as we obey the word of God will our faith become active. Uh, I can tell you that I have faith to, that a chair will hold me up. Uh, you know, I can pull this chair out here and say, well, I have faith that it'll hold me up. And that might be a rickety chair. This one here's pretty sturdy, but, you know, it might be a rickety chair and, and, or whatever. You say, well, I have faith that that chair will hold me up. But if I never sit down in it, I'm not demonstrating my faith. Uh, you know, if I say I have faith that that chair will hold me up and I come over here and I sit down in the chair... And I've demonstrated my faith. I believe that the chair will hold me up, and I've, I've sat down in it, and I've demonstrated my faith. I kind of did the work to, to show you that I have faith, that that chair will hold me up. You know, we, we, we tell people that we have faith lots of times, and we don't demonstrate our faith. Uh, I can tell you that I believe a rope will 
hold me up if uh, I swing out across a, a deep canyon or something, but until I grab a hold of that rope and I swing across that canyon, I haven't demonstrated my faith. I can say, yeah, I believe that rope will hold me up, uh, but I can sit there and talk about it all I want to. Until I grab that rope and swing across, I haven't demonstrated my faith that that rope will hold me up. I can tell you that I believe God will save me from my sins, but until I demonstrate my faith and ask him to come into my heart and to save me, uh, I can never be saved. John chapter 6 verse 29 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who has sent, uh, whom he hath sent. And that's Jesus. Well, what's the people say, what? Well, you got to work for your salvation. Well, there is one work, and that's to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, you know, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who has sent, whom he has sent. Believe on Jesus Christ and trust him for your salvation. True faith requires action. Uh, you know, when we put our faith into action, it shows people our faith. You know, you, know, you can't, it's just like James said, you show me your faith without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. And, and we've got to show people our faith by putting it into action. And I want to give some examples here this morning. Uh, you know, uh, in Joshua chapter 3, verse 13, this passage of Scripture talks about the priests, uh, you know, when they were getting ready to cross the Jordan River. And they, they, they were told to put their, step their feet into the water of the Jordan River. And when they stepped their feet in the water, the river would part and let them across. Uh, it was a time of flooding and everything, but it says, in Joshua 3, verse 13, says, And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, uh, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Uh, you know, uh, they were standing there, and they could have they said, Well, you know, in order for you to be able to cross, you've got to at least step your feet into the water. You know, a lot of people are just afraid to step into the water. They're afraid to take that first step of faith. Well, the priests, they took that step of faith. They stepped into the water, and the, and the water stopped and allowed uh, Israel to cross over the Jordan River. You, know, you can sit there and say, well, what if the priest had said, well, that would be impossible uh, you know, for us to step into the water and, and for us to be able to cross the river? Uh, but it wasn't impossible. They had to demonstrate their faith in what God said. What if they had said that God wants us to cross and... and uh, and then, then he can part the water without us stepping in. You know, well, God, if you want me to do that, you make the way and make it clear to me before I even go. You know, sometimes by faith, we look at things and we've got to realize that, hey, if God wants me to do it and he's put it in my heart to do it, I might not know exactly how it's going to be done, but by faith, I have to take the first step. By faith, I have to, to, to put my feet in the water, so to speak, uh, and, and follow what God's asking me to do. You know, uh, they could have said, well, why do we have to do anything? God, just part the water. Uh, no, that's not the way it works. For us as Christians, we've got to put our faith in him uh, and, and take the step. You know, But instead of, of doubting God, they stepped into the water. And when they stepped into the water, the water stopped, and they were able to cross over uh, the Jordan River. You can read that in Joshua chapter 3, uh, verses 14 through, or 13 through 17. Um, then there's another instance in the Bible where they had to demonstrate faith. You can find things like this all throughout the Bible, but I'm just picking out a few here. Uh, when they, Joshua again, when they faced the city of Jericho, it was a walled city. And the people inside of, of Jericho, I'm sure, thought they were safe. There was nobody going to be able to take that city. Uh, and, but God told Joshua something that they needed to do in order for them to be able to take the city. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 2 through 5, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and, the, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a shout, with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall come down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. 
So God had given them the given Joshua the recipe of how they could defeat uh, the city of Jericho. And what if Joshua would have said, God, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why, why should we march around the, the, the city of Jericho once each day for six days? Uh, and then, uh, you know, on the, on the seventh day, we march around seven times and then blow the trumpet and then we shout and the walls will fall down. Why, why should we do that? That's ridiculous to think that. Joshua didn't say that. Joshua said, God, if that's what you want us to do, that's what we'll do. And they did. And you can read that here in just, we'll read that here in just a minute. But what if Joshua would have said, God, you're a great God. I, I can know you can make you can make the walls fall if you want to without us. You know, he could. But why, uh, you know, don't we think that we have to put a little bit of faith into action and do what God asks us to do? You know, God can do e anything. But you and I have to put our faith in him and trust him. <laughs> Joshua did not question God. And he did put his faith to work. And he did what God said. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, it says, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So they did what God asked them to do by faith. You know, uh, on human terms, we would have been thinking, oh, that just sounds ridiculous uh, that for, uh, for me to do that. Why should I do that? But by faith, they believe what God said. And that's faith. Faith is believing what God says. You know, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, somebody can sit back and say, well, that sounds ridiculous. Why should I have to confess my sins? And why should I uh, have to believe on Jesus that died for my sins? Why, why should I do that? Because the Bible says that's what you've got to do to be saved. Uh, that's the faith we do. We believe upon Jesus Christ. We put our faith and trust in him uh, and trust him for salvation. You know, when God asks us to do something, it's, it's up to us to put our faith into action. And, you know, when we put our faith into action, that requires us to, to do something. You know, we can say, well, I've got faith. And if we, just like James said, you show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You cannot show me your faith without works. You cannot show me that you have faith in God without doing something. And you and I as Christians need to learn that when God asks us to do something by faith, we've got to step up and say, God, I'll do it because you are asking me to do it. I, I put my trust in you. Sometimes we look at it and say, God, that seems impossible, but you're asking me to do it, so I'm going to do it because you asked me to. Now, that's putting our faith into, work, in, into, into action. Another example in the Bible is the, the widow who made a cake for Elijah before the meal was, uh, was multiplied. Uh, in, in, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 11 through 14, it says, And as she was going to fetch it, uh, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And, and this was Elijah speaking to the, to the uh, widow who was about to make the last meal for her and her son. It says, And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a, in a barrel, and a little wood in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks. <laughs> didn't, didn't even have much wood, did she? I'm gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it before me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a, a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. Now she just told him, she said, I have just enough. I have just enough for me and my son to have a little morsel. And then we're going to eat that and we're going to die. And Elijah said, hey, you make me a cake first. You make me a cake Man. first. Uh, and, and he said, then for you and your son. It says, verse 14 says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. You know, the, the request of Elijah was to take, would take some faith. You know, the widow woman thought, you know, we're going, me and my son's going to eat this little bit of, of uh, we're going to make a little cake, and we're going to eat this, and we're going to die, because this is the last thing we've got. That's all the oil we've got. That's all the meal we've got. That's all we've got. We're going to eat it, and we're going to die. And this prophet comes along and says, you know what, if you'll just make me a little cake first, God's told me that, you know, if you'll do that and you give me that cake, uh, then make some for you and your son. The, the barrel of meal will not cease and the oil will not cease 
until the rain comes. And it would took some faith. But she said, you know what? I'll, I'll believe you. Uh, she had to give a lie to all that she had before she could see the miracle of God. In, second, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 15 and 16, it says, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. You know, because she put her faith into action, she did. She she didn't know in her. You know, she didn't have a security in believing that. Well, if I give him this last little bit of meal and this little bit of oil, and make a cake, that's all I've got. She didn't know that it was going to uh, keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until she did it. Mm -hmm. She had to do. She had to put her faith into action when she said, "Okay, I believe God." And I'll do this. And she made a cake and she gave it to Elijah. Then she made for her and her house. And for many days, uh, the, the widow's faith had to work before she knew the meal and the oil wouldn't run out. You know, there's many times we just got to put our faith into action before we can really see the hand of God move uh, in our lives. We just need to trust him. Another, another example is Naaman. You know the story. He had to dip seven times in the, in the Jordan River before being cleansed of leprosy. <clears throat> it says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 10 through 12, it says, And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall, shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. And Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Havana and far, far rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. You know, sometimes we, you know, God does things different than the way that we think that he should do them. Now here was a man who, was, who wasn't a Christian per se. Uh, you know, he was from a, a foreign land and, and someone told him, said, hey, I know somebody that can cleanse you of that leprosy uh, if you just go to the prophet Elisha you know and Naaman had something in his mind as what he thought would happen how that would be cleansed and sometimes we have in our mind how God ought to work how God ought to do this or how God ought to do that or he, he, sh he should do it this way and many times God says your, my ways are not your ways mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, God does things different and what we need to do is learn to trust him and do it his way uh, and, and Naaman got mad and he said, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to go down to that river Jordan. I'm not going to wash seven times. If I'm going to wash, I'm going to go back to Damascus and I'm going to wash in the rivers of Damascus. They're better than this old uh, Jewish water here. That's what he was saying, you know. Uh, he said, I'm gonna go, I want to do it my way. And when you and I get in our head that I want to do it my way, we're not trusting God. Uh, we've got to learn to trust Him and put our faith into action. You know, we, we've got to... Uh, be obedient to what God wants, and when we're obedient to what God wants, God will be faithful. Second Kings chapter five verses thirteen and fourteen says, "And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst not thou have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean?" <clears throat> his, his servants came to him and says, "You know, Naaman was a, a was a warrior, and if." if Elisha would have come out and said, you've got to do some great thing, some difficult thing. He would have done everything he could to try to do that thing uh, to accomplish it. But when it was something simple and, and maybe he just had to humble himself uh, and go wash in the Jordan River, uh, his servants came to him and said, look, you, if he'd asked some great thing, you'd have done it. Why not just go and wash and be clean? Because that's what he said to do. Then he humbled himself and he submitted. And it says, then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. clean. And I can imagine, you know, it's faith to, to finally break down and say, okay, I'll do it your way, God. Mm -hmm. You know, I can think, you know, one, two, three, four, five, it's still there. The leprosy's still there. Six, the leprosy's still there. Seven. Gone. Oh. You know, it's believing God. It's trusting Him. It's doing what He asks us to do. And when we do what He asks us to do, 
He's faithful. We put our faith in him. And God will come through every time. Jesus, uh, another example, we'll give one more and then we'll quit here in just a second. Uh, Jesus commanded the net to be let down in the daytime when the fish lay deep. You know, and his disciples have been fishing all the night. You know the story in Luke chapter 5. They've been fishing all night long. Hadn't caught anything. Uh, and Jesus, you know, they're coming in and here's Jesus. Says, uh, now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Uh, you know, sometimes, again, we think we know more than God does. Here, you know, uh, Peter was a fisherman. John and them were fishermen. And they had toiled all the night and they hadn't caught anything. And Jesus said, well, launch out into the deep and, and let down your nets for a draught. If you let down your nets, you're going to catch a draught, a great number of fish. Mm -hmm. And what Peter said, Master, we've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, you know, sometimes we've got to look at it and say, God, I don't understand. And that's what Peter was saying. Lord, Lord, we, we've tried all night long, hadn't caught anything. Nevertheless, because you asked me to, we'll let down the net. You know, when God asks us to do something, even when we think, well, you know, I've done everything that I can do, and it's not doing any good. When God speaks to us and asks us to do something, that's when we've got to let go and say, okay, nevertheless, Lord, I don't understand, but nevertheless, I'll let down the net. They let down the net, and they had so many fish that it began to break the net. Mm -hmm. That's the way God works, when we follow him, when we're obedient to him, when we put our faith into action. Sometimes we look at things and we say, I just don't understand. That's when we need to say, nevertheless, Lord, I'll do it your way. I'll do it your way, even though I don't understand. So think about it. What's God asking you to do by faith? Have you tried it your way? Have you done it the way you think it should be done? And you failed and failed and failed and failed. And God says, why don't you try it my way? Why don't you do it the way that I'm asking you to do it? By pride, sometimes God shows us what he wants us to do. And we're sitting there saying, I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Finally, we got to right now and say, okay, I've tried it my way. Nevertheless, Lord, I'll do it your way. Mm -hmm. And when we do it his way. We see great things happen. I believe God wants to do mighty things in our lives. In my life, in your life, in, in the church. But we need to learn to trust him by faith mm -hmm. and do the work. You know, when he asks us to do something, let's be obedient to him. Even if we look at it and say, I don't see how it can be done. God asks us to do it. We need to do it by faith. We've got to step into the water before we can see the water's part. Mm -hmm. We've got to dip seven times before we can see the leprosy cleanse. You know, we've got to march around the, the wall before we can see it fall. We've got to do it God's way. It's by faith. Believe in what God says to do. If you're here and you have a need, if God's spoken to your heart about doing something, maybe just surrendering by faith and asking him to, to use your life or to do something he's been asking you to do, be a good time just to surrender to him and say, God, I'll do it. I'll do it your way, by faith. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I trust you. You'll do it. Uh, just surrender.